Hi everybody, it's been a long time since I've done a Vinyl Finds video. I just haven't had the energy. I was going to do this as a Vinyl Finds video and I thought, <laughs> I'm just going to do a Vinyl Find. Because it's uh, interesting enough, I think. And maybe it'll get me back into it. It's Linda Hoyle's Pieces of Me. 1971, I picked up in the charity shop the other day for two quid. A little bit of damage here. It's on the Swirl label, so already it's collectible. And you know, although some are very common, this is one of the very rare records. And it has the original bag, and they do differ. This one does say 0671 stamped here, and it did come out in the middle of 1971. It was released then for those nerds among us. Now it's collectible for various reasons. It's the singer is a very good singer. She was actually a singer in the band called Affinity, who were also on the Virgo label. And that album as well is a very collectible record. She's backed on this album by Nucleus, another great band, of course, who are very uh, collectible in their own right, also on the Virgo label. Um, and I think also because this record had such a low print run, now, I find it beggar's belief, but apparently it only had 300 pressed. Now, I get that nowadays 300 records is normal for a lot of different releases, a lot of vanity project, projects and more. Yeah, I'll have a thousand of those, mate. Um, but to find a record label, a successful record label at the time, you know, doing well with various bands and artists, to only press 300 records, you know, I can imagine doing 3,000 and seeing where they go, you know. But 300 apparently, and that's all that it would produce. Hence it's rare, hence people pay four figures. And, you know, people love Virgo label, and they love to complete the label as best they can. But to me, the music lets it down. Now you'd think with Nucleus and being, a, and she's a great singer, and then, you know, some good material on here. It's an uneven listen. It starts off with a Nina Simone cover called Backlash Blues, which... She sings well, but she's not Nina Simone, and I think you have to be Nina Simone to sing it for various reasons. It follows in an uneven pattern after that. You get a slow, mellow, soft track, and then a loud track, and then a slow, soft track, and then a loud track. And it goes like that through the entire album. And then it ends on a really mediocre track called Barrel House Blues, which is as bad as the title suggests. So it's a strange affair. Like a lot of Virgo records, it's collectible, it's big money, as I say it's hundreds and hundreds of pounds worth, um, but it's patchy and although as I say some great, the great track is the title track, I think it, the title sums up perhaps what's going on here, there's a lot of different pieces of me, there are all these different aspects and facets and dimensions to my listening and what I enjoy and hence it's uneven because there are different kinds of music on here and different styles. So there's no sort of real flow. You can't just sit back and mellow out and you can't really rock out. It's just up, down, up, down. Some people would say this is a masterpiece. Some people might agree with me. I don't know. Anyway, I thought I'd show it because it's such a rare record. I never thought I'd see one, um, you know, um, let alone get my hands on a copy. But I thought I'd show that. And there's maybe about 10 of you who might have been interested in that record. Um, that particular copy, side one plays brilliantly, side two, a little bit of crackle and noise, which will probably just clean off. And there is a, a bit of a clunk through one of the tracks for about 40 seconds, but it's not a scratch. It's one of those sort of dirty marks. So that probably just come with a good clean, come off with a good clean. Anyway, I may get back into doing these videos because I have found some pretty, pretty rare records lately. So I'll see you all later. Until then, I hope you're all doing well. Cheers.